just now, not because he's a critic, you know, but because God's people are so offended over a four-letter word, in this case, hell, but they aren't offended over the bigger words, abortion, murder, iniquity, injustice. And I want to ask you all, when's the last time you prayed for our brethren behind bars? We're commanded in the scripture to do that. How do you pray for someone who's being psychologically tormented through ELF, extreme low frequency, and other forms of uh, mind control and manipulation, who are constantly watched and know they're not paranoid, and all of the revelation of all the mind control and all of the experiments that have gone on, do you realize you have brothers and sisters that are suffering from that mind control, from psychotronic warfare, uh, basically from the new coming warfare that's mind mapping that basically is thought projection that's reading your mind it's at a level that's unimaginable so does a helmet of salvation maybe bring on a new meaning does the breastplate of righteousness maybe protect your heart because ladies and gentlemen let me make it simple for you the words of Jesus are simply this the whole world that doesn't mean 90% that doesn't mean 99 point it means the entire world lies in the evil one, under Satan's control, Satan's power, and Satan's influence. That's why when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, he translates us out of that present kingdom of hell into his eternal kingdom of life. That's why in quantum physics, we are seated with him in heavenly places. That's why in quantum realm, it's called superpositioning. God has superpositioned us in the heart of his Son, who sits, Jesus Christ, at the right hand of the Father. So if I can explain salvation from a, uh, a single position of quantum, and I don't call it theory, but quantum statement, then can we not at least stand up and be men. When I post what I'm going to post tomorrow for my brother who gave this amazing testimony, I think you're all going to have to have, and I'm talking now primarily to men, I think you're going to have to have a come to Jesus moment of what you really stand for, what you really believe, and what you're willing to uh, go the entire uh, uh, race with. In other words, either, uh, you know, put up or shut up, you know. Uh, we're talking about not being open to just the criticism of uh, foolish people, but we're talking about winning those who are closest to us. Because, Doug, you, I, Joe, everybody listening to this broadcast, all the world, has to deal with the words of Jesus, where the enemy of man's life will be those of his own household. My brother, who sent his amazing testimony as a former pagan, deals with these issues. And so I'm just, uh, you know, going to post it. But now we're dealing with the fact that all the science fiction movies are coming into play. Now we're dealing with the fact that the people who are actual illuminists and occultists, like H.G. Wells, talking in his movie The Time Machine, about the Eloi, which were people that were raised for the Morlocks to eat. In other words, the Morlocks were cannibals. And the Eloi felt like the garden with all the fruit that they could eat and just the, all of the uh, passions of their flesh and desire could be met. There comes a day when the Morlocks show up. Maybe this time it's the Warlocks. But the headlines are already echoing the demonic taste for flesh. I'm sorry. People have got to grow up. People have got to stand up and people have got to speak up. And they've got to realize that God has called them so. You know, there's a Bible scripture that my guess is, and only known to God, I better not gamble to guess, but a major percentage of men who call them Christians would never stand the test of let the man whom the Lord Jesus has redeemed say so. Let the man whom the living God has reached into their wretched life, I be one, you were one, Doug, and everyone was one on this planet, some to different degrees, some to lesser degrees. But those who have been forgiven much love much. And the weakness of the Christian testimony is why the uh, bafflement head is on Drudge. It's the reason why cannibals are on the front page of Drudge. It's the reason why exorcists are on the front page of Drudge. It's a reason why the whole thing, the whole paradigm that you used to believe no longer fits the situation. Well, I, I think, look at the, let's just take a profile of uh, 
the world right now. We've got selfies of self-indulgent, narcissistic movie stars and others literally walking off cliffs or falling off ledges, ledges literally in a Norwegian fjord. We've got this situation now where instead of denying ourselves, it's, uh, you know, and taking up the cross and following Jesus, it's uh, deny yourself nothing. You know, basically that's a mantra of Satanism. But it, and it goes beyond that. The fascinating thing to me is, is that if you look at humanity now, it's basically in two camps. And, and God is separating the sheep from the goats. God is also identifying the wolves. And he's going to do this, Joe, through all of, uh, how should I say this, life's interactions that we all come, against, uh, come into or come up against in a given day. Because, again, there's no way that we can stand in the power of our own might, okay? And please, again, ladies and gentlemen, be praying for our brothers in prison our sisters in prison, please be praying for those suffering from psychotronic warfare. Be praying for Doug and Joe. Be praying for those who are on the front line. And I'll tell you this, you know, somebody said, and I told this before, Doug, and, you know, they almost think that somehow, you know, I'm a canary in the mine or you're a canary in the mine, and as soon as we die, they'll know it's time to head for the hills or whatever. Guess what? God keeps his point, men, alive. Unfortunately, those who follow behind get left behind. And, and I'm not talking about the rapture or anything like that, and I'm not even going there. But the thing I'm trying to say is this. We will either fight, be victorious, and win, or we will be trodden underfoot in such a way that Brother Bob's vision will come to pass, and I believe it will come to pass, and, and we will see the horrors of woe unto the nation that forgets God. Now, let me share this, because I'm getting a lot of flack, because, and I stand with my endorsement of Donald Trump. I will not weasel on it, okay? I know people expect moral perfection out of him, but when someone is hated that much by the world, the, the world uh, uh, enemies to the living God, i got to see God's got a sense of humor. He used Gideon and 300 people to basically fight, you know, and, and win and be victorious over numbers that are so much greater. And it's almost like God saying, come on, pile it on, pile it on. Meanwhile, you've got, you know, you've got abject, uh, how do I say this, treason, and there's nothing said about it. You've got schools legislating that you can't have the American flag. All borders, language, cultures are being destroyed. But at the heart of the matter, Joe, I think this is what you're going for. It's ego and pride, and those are the two greatest sins. You know, it's amazing. Anybody who knows where they stand in Jesus because of God's work in their life will automatically be criticized by those who have no standing in Jesus or feel threatened in their standing in Jesus, okay? And I've, I've watched that happen. You know, my answer to everybody is if you want to knock Doug Hagman, Joe Hagman, go start your own radio program. Pay the price they've paid. You want to take my place? Step right up and do it. You know, you want it. You think you can do what uh, God has prepared Timothy Alberino to do? Be my guest. Spend 10 years in the Amazon jungle and listen to what he ate, listen to what he went through, and listen to his, and I've I got to get him some time, and he'll do it when he's ready, to give you one of the most remarkable testimonies of God meeting a young man who went to the Amazon, the most inhospitable place in the world, to prove that God loved him and that there really was a God. And he's a PK. That means he's a preacher's kid. But he didn't rest on his laurels. And I can tell you this. You better have a strong stomach when Tim starts to tell you what they ate in the uh, Amazon. They'd make special forces guys gag. And I'm not kidding you. I mean, it's that wild. Uh, we're talking now, again, we're talking about a nation that's totally given over to idolatry. No place does it say, thou shalt love thyself with all thy heart, with all thy might, with thy iPhones, with thy, you know, telephones, with thy computer screens. It's me, 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 me. And I think this is the most insipidly wicked uh, plan of hell itself to get people so occupied with themselves 
They lose track of where the country is going. They end up uh, separated from their fellow man. They no longer can communicate. There's no longer relationships. Everything is an email, maybe a, uh, a romp, and then a, a goodbye, Charlie, goodbye, Mary, uh, through a, you know, a text message. We have become some of the most cold-hearted individuals on the planet. And by the way, Doug, do you remember when I said years ago that I was really being given a word that America would become a hissing in the nostrils of the nations around us? Oh, yeah. Yep, I do. And a hissing is what a snake does in contempt before it strikes. Now, look, here's the thing. People have got to grow up. Again, they've got to be more offended over 70 million babies being butchered than they are over, if I use the word, hell. They've got to be more offended over uh, their Christian brothers being slaughtered, murdered, tortured in Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, and in Syria being sold as meat. In other words, sliced and diced in the meat market. They've got to be more infuriated over the treatment of women in the Middle East. They're being hung. They're being stoned. They're being drawn and quartered. They're being burned alive. They're being raped to death to the point their insides are on their outsides. And if that offends you, so be it. Because what does it take for the people in this country sitting in the pews, that's short for puke, I don't know if that's true, but in my book it is, that will not stand up for Jesus, that will not speak up for the... The slaughter of the Christians. I want to make sure that, uh, you know, they're friends with the world. Makes me just disgusted, okay? And if I keep yelling like that, I'll lose my voice. But what, what do you do when, when people just don't care? Well, the answer the Bible is, is God gives them over to believe a lie. And so tonight, consider what I read to you from my brother's testimony. And what I'll post tomorrow is the ultimate wake-up call. I can't say it better than my brother uh, wrote it. It goes up on my alert tomorrow. I can't say. I don't have words that are eloquent enough or specific enough or decisive enough or uh, let's say this, that everybody will accept to tell everyone your days are numbered. I live in the context of that every day. I live in the context of that every day. Or or you nameless bunch of uh, cowards that can't even use your real name. Look, here's the deal. If you don't use your real name, I will not answer you. Uh, Doug, I just had to get that off my chest. Had it happen again today. Amen. The thing is, is that we're coming to the point that when you stand up for Jesus and be counted, who knows the outcome, but I know where you end up. And to all you who have been intercessors in the background, God bless you. God will give you the reward you so will be blessed beyond your, uh, when I say this, wildest imagination, beyond your understanding of, of the fruits of intercession, of the blessing of intercession, of the rewards of intercession. And, and I, I just, you know, I thank God for Pastor Bruce York's church and, and Susan York. I thank God for th- those complete bodies. You know, Doug, there are people that get together in South Africa on Bible studies, listen to this and pray for us. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I've gotten I've gotten some communications, mail communications that say just that. And I want to echo your your sentiments. Um, the House of Prayer, uh, Susan York, Bruce York, please, folks. Uh, what, what, a, what a gift of God. But go ahead, Steve. I didn't want to take you off your... Uh, no, no. Look, you man, chime in. Because here's the deal, okay? Uh, the reason... The reason that I wrote what I wrote and, and, and have done what I've done with my life, and, you know, I mean, I had a come-to-Jesus moment again and again and again, like uh, hourly lately, but, you know, when you when you think about your life, I'm looking at the famous movie stars that are dead, you know, one was on the London Daily Mail, Gene Wilder's dead now, 
Everybody's dead and dying, and you and I have that appointment that we cannot escape. And what are you sending before you? You know, I don't care if you got, you know, a, 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 the, the monster house and the block or you've got 51 cars or whatever. I care about where is your stand for Jesus. And I'll tell you what. You know, it's amazing to see, you know, the, uh, the, I, I, I'm struggling for words because I, I want to say eight million things at once, okay? Slow down, Steve. The men who love Jesus, no matter if they're blessed with a lot, blessed with plenty, blessed with little, they love Jesus. That's where our relationship is. Same thing with the women. You know, our relationship is there. Those of you who have never stood up for the Lord, please, you're, you're running out of time. I mean, Doug, you know, we used to say that and, and sustain the mocking. And look, I wish I would have had thicker skin, but I didn't. Let me say this. I'm certainly getting there now. One minute in the presence of God will change an entire year of your life if the Lord moves in that minute, Okay. One minute of God moving on you, in you, and through you changes everything. Maybe that's a good uh, T-shirt slogan. When God moves in me, I move for him or something. I don't know. But, the, you know, you listen to the miracles of Henry Gruber, who we had on your show, what, three weeks ago, maybe a month now? That's the norm for him. That's, that's, we, have our, we hold our jaws open when we hear stuff like that, you know? Uh, so, so here's what I'm saying. By the grace of God, whatever time God gives us, even with Donald Trump, if he challenges the establishment, which he has, notice one thing, he doesn't back down. You know what I love? I love the moral cowardice of the Christians that email me saying, I can't vote for him because of his uh, stand on abortion. Okay, what makes you think that God can't change his heart? You know, and, I, and, I, and I'm just saying this, we're, we're the biggest bunch of uh crybabies I've ever seen. I, I shared with Susan Duclo when she was talking on News Pipeline and Stefan that I shared with them that, you know, they want these uh, zones in colleges, you know, and I said, if they want to give crybabies crybaby zones in colleges, then I want them to also demand, or I'm going to demand that they give them Prozac dipped binkies and adult diapers, okay, and leave them there until they grow up and, and decide that, you know, no one protects anybody from anything in this day and age unless they have an ulterior motive. That's not true of Jesus because he is the good shepherd. He will protect his sheep. So we've got to grow beyond this childishness. We've got to grow up in him and make a difference, Doug. And, and can I be blunt? At this point, I'm not seeing it happen. I'm not. You, you know, yeah, and, and that speaks to kind of what, what our conversation was a little bit yesterday. Uh, there is this lack of, and, and I often say this, Steve, the change that is expected under Trump is not going to come from Trump or even the movement by Trump, but it's going to come from within each of us. Don't you agree with that? I mean, we have to change. We have to, every Christian listening to this, if we all just decided to change, and to pick up the mantle of leadership of our families and of our blocks and of our employment, uh, you know, of coworkers, we can in fact affect change. But I, everyone's expecting the other person to do it, uh, isn't that? Isn't that? I mean, everyone's expecting Trump to change everything. Well, no one's demanding it. None of the Christians sitting in the pews or the pulpits are demanding it. It's just my my yeah. thought, you know. So, all right. Yeah. yeah, no, no. And look, here's here's the thing. We don't know what God's going to do at the end of this show tonight, okay? But ladies and gentlemen, I do uh, really want you to understand something, that God is always moving forward. If you decide to, you know, take a recess, you come back into the fight, he'll take you from where you stop, not from where you want to be. I learned that the hard way. You will not get to go back, and that's why, too, look, here's where we're at. How can we be looking at one of the biggest earthquakes in history brewing right now? If you look at Iceland with Kepla, uh, a monster volcano, hasn't gone off in 55 years, and it has two earthquakes today. We've got a 7.4, some people show it as a 7.1 earthquake happening on the Mid-Atlantic Trench. We've got the Canary Islands, and the, we've got the Azores being uh, influenced by that uh, fault with
donate Let's Go. We have an entire eastern seaboard going into southern Florida. When it lets go, it's going to be very, very dangerous and very, very deadly for them. We've got the corresponding story of the... Um, reindeer being killed, you know, by a lightning strike. I've seen lightning strikes, and I've seen an individual or two get killed by a lightning strike. That's not normal lightning. That's a manufactured plasma burst weapon being tested, okay? But people don't believe that. They still don't believe in, uh, uh, you know, chemtrails. We've got now Zika virus, you know, man-made. We've got a false scenario happening, just like Ebola. Hey, if, you know, what was it, two years ago was Ebola? and now it's Zika, you know, and now they're showing uh, little children that are responding more to the pesticide, as Mike Adams has shown, and others, and, you know, the virus itself. I'm not belittling it. I'm just saying that, listen, what they are pushing is your heads up, whether it's the CDC or whoever. When they start pushing a vaccine, you know that it's just the old plan, create the problem, provide the vaccine solution, and bring about your desired result. The world is going to be depopulated. When we broke the story, I think, I, did I break it on yours, or did I break it on Coast to Coast about the Deagle report, D-E-A-G-L-E? Always do what they're being told to do. We were talking, Joe brought up the issue of, you know, we're a self-indulgent nation. The thing is, is, is that, look at the, uh, Look at the condition of the military. You've got Mike Flynn telling it like it is, and very few people listening to him. You've got the complete destruction of morale. You've got morality. Remember, the uh, Obama nation said this. He said, America is the greatest nation in the world. We, in we intend to change all that. I suggest to you he has done that, or they have done that. So if people won't stand up for Jesus now... What is what will be the outcome? I think we know the outcome. I think it's obvious what the outcome will be. It'll be very deadly, very dangerous, and very, how should I say this, heartbreaking beyond measure, Doug. Because what you see happening to the Christians is going to happen here. What you have seen happen in Venezuela is going to happen here. Remember, Venezuela had a trillion dollars worth of oil. Nobody ever asked, where does that money go? Have you ever thought about where Venezuela's oil revenue is well, thank you, Doug. And, and here's the thing. You know, and by the way, Tom Horn and uh, the next True Legends DVD, we're doing a pretty interesting joint uh, uh, presentation. I'll leave it at that. But you're going to be surprised and blown away. It seems like now God has taken our separate paths and we're, we're being brought to a focus, okay? Those of you familiar with uh, cameras will know that, you know, the light has to be focused. It has to come to a specific point on the focal plane or on the film plane to give you a sharp image. Image. It's it's astonishing to see, Doug, the lens, and, and no pun intended, obviously we're doing video, uh, but we're doing it in such high resolution, high quality. I, I don't think people get the fact that... You know, I've, I've always tried to, you know, put my best foot forward. And by the grace of God, even though I stumble, you know, as a matter of fact, probably wouldn't stumble so much. I hate tying my shoelaces. It's a genetic thing. And I bought those uh, North Face boots that have this pulse cinch strap. I, I got to find some more North Face boots that have a cinch strap. But the point being is, is that we're at a time now where things are coming so fast and furious. I want to revisit a statement I made on your show multiple times through the last so many years. And it was simply this, that you're going to look to the right and it'll be coming at you full force and fury, whatever the event is. You're going to look to the left. It's going to be coming at you full force force and fury. You're going to look behind you and you're going to see basically what Jeremiah said, the running of the chariots. You're going to see before you a 
an insurmountable river of, I won't even go into the detail, but let's just say this, a very horrible-looking river. You're going to look above, and the signs are going to be so horrific in the skies that you're going to wonder, God, is this the end of the world? And he's going to say, it's not the end of the world, but it's the end of the age. We're going to feel the earth move under our feet. We're going to smell the sulfur as the volcanoes exhale hell's wicked breath. We're going to behold things in our families, in our hearts. Those who we love with all our hearts will betray us in a heartbeat. The mind control that will be exerted and exhibited in, in the country will be astronomical through video games and through all of the uh, dark arts and dark magic. We're going to see ritual magic be formed on TV, which you've already watched numerous times. You just didn't know what to call it, whether it's a Super Bowl halftime or any. And by the way, I don't watch Super Bowl shows. I'll only see the, and, and I'm not trying to be, whoa, uh, you know, uh, anything, but I just, I, I just don't like that stuff. I don't watch rock and rollers except when I see excerpts on the Vigilant Citizen of everybody giving uh, the Eye of Horus or the Illuminati signal. Uh, the fascinating thing to me is this: is I don't believe, and this is what I this is how I pray. I say, Lord, I don't know how you could make it any plainer. I don't know, Lord, what you would have to do or even could do, taking into the into fact that you won't force yourself on anybody to get them. I, I read a, uh, I won't name the pastor, but he's a pretty well-known pastor, and he says people are too fixed on prophecy. Well, no offense, he's too fixed on the past and thinks he can take the days back to the Minutemen days, you know. I pushed his stuff all through the years on talk radio, and, and you know, evidently he has an axe to grind with anybody that's talking about prophecy. Okay, then he has an axe to grind with the testimony of Jesus, because the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Jesus was the ultimate prophet. And, you know, the the thing that people have got to understand is the reason he's telling you these things, he's saying, you know, be not troubled. Don't be troubled. Well, i got to tell you, that's easier said than done, you know. But it's whose report are we going to believe? There is nothing. I want to make this clear. There is nothing on mainstream news, any vehicle, any form, any presentation that has the slightest semblance of the truth. And do you know why, do you know why everybody hates Donald Trump? Instead of being mad at him because he's got $9 billion and doesn't apologize for it, look at his kids. His kids, a, a man is known by the fruit, uh, a tree is known by the fruit it bears. When I heard Eric give his uh, presentation at the Republican National Convention, when I heard Don Jr., and when I heard Ivanka, you know what? I mean, those kids have the root in their father. What were they saying? They're saying the truth. But remember this, in a kingdom of lies, telling the truth is a revolutionary act. That's a twist of the original statement. But, you know, what is he doing? Well, in any game of life, or any game of cards, by the way, I don't play cards, but I know this, there is a trump card that can be played at the appropriate moment. And I believe God is going to play his trump card. What a hypocritical thing for the foundation of Hillary to basically be, you know, calling him. Do you remember when Hillary Clinton said after leaving the White House she was broke? Yeah, yeah. And in order I'd to like to be that broke. Him, yeah, yeah, mean, yeah. Yeah. How can someone who – now, I want to make the difference. You can tell a lie, and it's a lie, and you can repent. You can be a liar who continually lies and repent. But there comes a point when you become the lie – you don't. You can no longer repent, because you're given over. Then you know you no longer are in the process of. You're no longer. It's not an action. It becomes an entity. There you go, Doug. It's not an action. It's an entity. Jesus said it this way: the whole world lies in the evil one. The whole world lies in the evil one. Giving control really of the internet bad. to the United Nations. Okay is like putting Dracula as the head of the Red, Red Cross blood drawing. And they're not even a good organization. Let's take it, you know, putting him in charge of uh, dealing with wounded soldiers on a battlefield where there's plenty of blood. We are watching insanity play out before our very eyes. 
We are seeing it in the headlines. And I, I tell you this, I believe that what we're watching in the strategy of uh, all of the communist motions, George Soros, why isn't he in jail? Why isn't he in prison? Okay, why? Because he's protected. How can anybody believe in the laws of this land any longer when they're subjective, when they're capricious? In other words, it doesn't apply to them, only little people. And for every uh, black brother and sister listening to this conversation, you've got to go look at Hillary's statements. Thank God there are men and women in the black community that are speaking out. And they're brethren. They're not black any more than I'm a white guy. Of course I'm a white guy. Of course they're black. But they have their identity in Jesus Christ. And some of the greatest essays being written against uh, the democratic use of black people and almost teaching or treating them like slaves is coming from some amazing black pastors, and I got news for you, they outnumber the white guys who are keeping their mouth shut, okay? Now, are there black pastors that are deceived? Yes. Are they leading their flock astray? Yes. Are they in violation of the election rules and laws? Yes. But guess what? There's no rules. That's the point. There are no rules anymore. There are no laws anymore. You only have one right to uh, right in the United States now. Is you either will stand up against it in the spirit and and do what God tells you to do as a man protecting your family, as uh, my you know uh, newly saved or uh, recently saved uh, former pagan friend did. And, and you've got to say, what do I really believe in? What do I really care for? Or what will I really? Fight and die for it. I'm not talking about the red, white, and blue and bombing the hell. And, and for those of you who are offended by that statement, I'm going to say it three times. Bombing the hell out of innocent men, women, and children overseas and then calling them collateral damage. Listen, we are, we are such a, a pharisaical nation within the claimants of, of the Church of Jesus Christ. We are, we are absolutely obtuse in our testimony. And we overcome the devil, the book of Revelation says, by the blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony, and we love not our life unto death. Okay? Three things. By the word of our testimony. You've got no testimony, Derek Prince used to say, if you've got no testimony, you probably didn't have a test. And you better consider whether you really know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So we overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb. That's what Jesus does. The word of the testimony, that's what, what, what we share with the world, and God empowers us. The, uh, the apostles prayed, and the disciples prayed, grant unto, thy, grant unto us, Lord, boldness to declare thy holy Son, Jesus. I guarantee you that one isn't preached a lot, uh, often. And so what do we get? We get wormwood. We get parasites feasting on the carcass of a dead Orthodox, once great uh, uh, establishment which, where the church bells rang out. And instead, you'll have the Baphomet in major towns. You'll have in Alaska an invocation by a satanic priest. It's only going to get worse. And by the way, you will see human sacrifice totally legalized in the years ahead in the United States. You'll see, well, we fund it in overseas. Why wouldn't we do it here? You know, see, Doug, I don't know how, and, and maybe you can help me, okay? Because you're more, and you are logical, and you're a very fine writer. I'm not kissing anything. But I'm just saying this. You know, if you sit and analyze it as evidence, as, you know, you've done your investigation, you've got your evidence, you've presented it to whatever side you're representing, and the thing is plain, but there's no way to get a commitment. It's a hung, hung jury. It's a, you know, put into it advisement, ad nauseum, ad infinitum. Uh, what, what do you say of people? You know, the Scripture says, my people love to have it so, yeah. you know? Yeah. And for, for, for God said that when we hate the truth, you know, we're turned over to believe a lie. No, I, I'm sorry. I had, I had you on mute, or I get the people uh, complaining. I'm, I'm too loud of this. I'm sorry. You know, the deal is, is that we are at the point now where all criticisms will fall short of the events as they unfold. We're at the point where people should start thanking God. And, and look, I get it. I get it. Alex gets it about me. I get it about him. You know, look at the guy pouring his guts out. And when Hillary Clinton identified him as an enemy of the state, and he came back at her and said, I'm not afraid of you. 
thank God that Al- Alex is, is being prayed for. You know, by the way, I was on his show, and I found him to be an incredibly bright guy. I found him to be an incredible, incredibly cordial guy. You know, I make a movie about the Jesuit control and takeover of uh, the end times within the Catholic Church, and they call me a Jesuit, okay? I speak out against uh, 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 the Khazars or anybody that isn't a real Jew, and I'm called a Jew hater. I speak out against the devil being behind everything, and I'm a Jew lover. You know, let me say this for all of you that have got a complaint. You can't put your finger in my face. Alex's face, Doug's face, or anybody who's out there, Pastor Langford. Pastor Langford, probably one of the most amazing men. He's my friend. But look, I'm not, I, I can't keep up with him on the scripture. I don't walk the walk that he walks, okay? But I'll tell you one thing don't start him in the natural, because if he ever forgets one minute he's a pastor, he's a bulldog. I'm telling you point blank. And a certain radio host should be really happy that David Langford was at his property at one point, because when some bad guys came by, he came by possibly do somebody uh, some serious harm. It was David that went for their mutual protection. Okay, so yeah, is he my friend? Yes. Have I lived? his home with him and he and me with mine. Yes, you know, I'm talking with our families. Yeah, and so here's what I'm trying to say. I am sick and tired of the time being wasted in these last breath of people knocking Alex or knocking me or knocking you, okay? Uh, you know, obviously they're going to knock us. And I know that, uh, can I say something? I always love the anonymous cowards. Blessed are you. Well, why don't you be blessed and start, stand up for Jesus and enjoy the blessing? And I'm not mocking this when all men speak evil of you. You notice, Doug, it didn't say some men. That's right. It said all men. All men. You know, so, so, so the deal is, anybody who's a true brother is a rarity. Anybody who's a true sister is a rarity. There are people that are amazing, men and women of God, you know, and, and, over and over and over, they stand in the gap, you know. Uh, uh, let's take Jim Baker. What a, an amazing guy. What most people don't know is he had a second trial and he was acquitted, but they didn't let him go at the penalty of a false acqu- And somebody that was associated with him got away with a half a billion dollars. Was he right in his son- sin? No. Did he repent? Yes. You know, who was it? Bob Mumford said, and this is the origin, I think, of this statement, that Christians are the only people in the world that kill their wounded. I, 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 I've heard any, that, yeah. Any army knows the idea is to get the soldiers healed up so that your your uh, men are not diminishing before your eyes, you know? Mm. But look at it now. The attack, God bless every godly nurse, every godly doctor listening to me worldwide. You don't know, and I hope you'll hear me, because it cost a man his life to tell me this years ago. But the United Nations has a plan for doctors and nurses who won't tow their line. Yeah. These people are born from hell. They hate God's creation. They hate the affection that God shows to the people that come to him through repentance and believing in Jesus Christ. They hate you. They want you dead. So let's put it in reality. When Hillary Clinton came after Alex Point Blank, she was she was basically giving, if you will, uh, the Arkansas farewell. But guess what? God is greater than that. And as she melts down before the whole world to see, and I said this, I said, if she were literally to pass away, they prop her up in a coffin and declare her that her spirit's in there, they've contained her spirit, so let's vote her in as president. I'm not kidding. And that's why Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. Mm. You can't (laughs) fight or argue over dead orthodoxy. It's dead. But you can focus on the word of the Lord, which is, behold, 
I am the Lord thy God. Is there anything too hard for me? Nope. Nope. There's nothing, Lord. There's nothing too hard for you. There's a lot of stuff that's hard for us. And he says, but then that's because you're leaning on your own strength and not on mine. Trust me, I get that one a lot. And it's rightly so. You know, so here's what we do. We get our marching orders from Jesus. We link up with people that are of like mind. We link up with people that aren't cowards, you know. We link up with people that are willing to express their love for Jesus. And, and you know, even it's such a simple thing as praying in the restaurant, you know. If they kick you out for praying in the restaurant, you can just, you know, leave them a 20% tip and say, thank you for proving the Word of God right, you know. They hated you without a cause. And again, I'm saying to people, if you see somebody praying in the restaurant and you can afford it buy their meal buy their oh meal. amen Let, yeah. yeah and i mean listen this is such an easy thing to do to be proactive you know but something as simple as that something that says i appreciate you brother or sister i appreciate you couple for taking the time to acknowledge the god of heaven for all your blessings you know yeah. And I gotta be. T- I gotta tell you something. I, I I'm frustrated by people I know who call themselves Christians. Okay, and they won't even they won't even make the effort to say grace or you know yubba dub dub. Thanks for the grub. That's not what I'm talking about. Okay, I'm talking about a heartfelt gratefulness that carries through and covers what you may not know you're eating nowadays. So, Doug, here's here's the thing I'd like to leave everybody with, and, I, and I'm sorry, again, I've got a splitting headache, and somebody says, see, you no know, worries. God's getting them. Oh, yeah, God's got me. But I'd like to share with the people that if you want to know the headlines of tomorrow, please go on truelegendsofseries.com, watch the trailer, look at what we're doing. We've got the only guy who's a pilot. Now, I know that uh, Lynn Marzulli, I think, has got some of the guys that were actually involved in one of the shootings, but the Kandahar shooting giant was a couple years before the Bagram giant. That's how we're going to, you know, where they're at two different areas, but you've got multiple witnesses or multiple testimonies of of these events taking place, you know? We've got a general of years ago in 2005 that came forth and and gave me the story, and it's it's on my website of the sacrifice below the Vatican, and all the world's leaders were there. All the world's leaders were there. So do you really wonder why the New World Order is coming on strong? You you see, Doug, here's the thing. I don't know where the revelation is going to lead us. I don't know where the true legends of the next uh, episode. I I, I know the general plan. I've I've seen it in my eyes. I I think the Lord has led it, uh, you know, led me to it. Tim is a tremendously gifted man. And, uh, you know, I think I'm doing what God's called me to do, to be the producer. Producer has to bring it all together. The producer is responsible for what goes on the screen. The director is the guy that writes the narrative and then calls the shots. Fortunately, you know, it's funny. I'm at 65 or 64, I guess, when I started this, and that's what I was trained in college in, motion picture production and still photography. In the days we had to have Aeroflexes, 16-millimeter, uh, you know, a cine, uh, what were they called, cine tables, where we had to cut each scene, match it to the soundtrack, make sure when we were shooting uh, the film that we were in sync. I mean, all the old ways of doing movies, and now we can do it in a marvelous way. So I would really like those those of you who are out there, if you want to support us, look, buy the DVD. It's 25 bucks or download it on Vimeo. But if you buy the DVD, you're helping us, and then you're you're insuring the next one. I, I told him, and we, you know, uh, he's been gone, I've been gone. But I said, look, we are under the gun to get this thing done. We all know that everything changes, you know, by the first of the year. And we all know that things can change abruptly. And for every single person that, whose life has been one to Jesus, how can a documentary film win people to Jesus? Simple. Because we're pointing them to the Bible, we're showing them it's relevant, and we're showing them how the history and the cover-up of history has led them to believe the lies they now so greatly embrace. This is nothing new. Genetic engineering, Doug. Genetic engineering and genetic Armageddon, turning men into monsters, was the title of the book I wrote 20, 15, 20 years ago. I don't even know when now. But the thing is, is genetic Armageddon. The, and see, here's another thing. People yawn, burp, and break wind, but they don't get it. They don't get it. That's you right. are targeted for extinction. That's right. 
you're, 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 that's, what, that's what they don't get. You, you know, Steve, you've said that consistently. Now people, the, the people who are awake are starting to understand that. The others are so far baked, so far gone, in my view, that you could tell them that, uh, you know, their hair's on fire and, and they would just yawn. So, you know, we, we have to, in my view anyway, Steve, that we have to, we have to save those who we can. And, and speak to those who we can. It's not preaching to the choir. It's reinforcing the. Yep. the it's reinforcing that, brother. Look, you go and you get some rest. Thank you for for your appearance tonight, and obviously with, uh, for Tim's appearance. But uh, indeed, we're going to echo after after your departure. We're going to be echoing the sentiments on True Legends, the Unholy Sea, and of course your future projects, are carrying metal for you, Steve. God bless you, man. Thank you. Thank you for appearing tonight. Thank you, Doug. All and right, thank you, Joe. And God bless each and every one of you intercessors. Thank you for your prayers. I can't name you by name. Again, I'm sorry for my voice. It's gone. But we'll we'll talk. And, and, and I want everyone to pray, if you would, Doug. Keep, please, people, keep Greg Evenson in your prayers. Yes. Greg has fought the good fight of faith. He's a warrior. If he has, wasn't a warrior, he would have gone home to be with Jesus. But I haven't in my spirit... And who am I? Just someone who loves him immensely. I don't see where it's God's time to take him. So please keep Greg and Liz in your uh, uh, prayers. And keep Hawk in your prayers, too. Hawk is an amazing man of God. He was a guy I could turn my radio show over. And he needs a blessing. He needs to be uh, supported. Just and, and so thank you for those of you who do. And thank those of you who are sending me, uh, you know, uh, all of the emails saying what a blessing it's been and that you're praying for me so